So we're going to talk about using subprocedures and functions in your programs. Uh, the main idea here is that a subprocedure or function lets you encapsulate some code in its own procedure, of which there are two kinds, subprocedures and functions. And we've already seen some examples of these. For example, we've seen event procedures, uh, which are subprocedures, and we've seen Excel functions. So the question is, first of all, why do we want to create more procedures anyway? Uh, logically, they're not strictly necessary, but they can be very, very useful in two different ways. One is if we're doing the same task repeatedly, we can write the code in one place and then call the, re the same procedure over and over again instead of having to repeat the code. So doing a one call is much simpler than rewriting the entire code. Secondly, if a program is long and complex, we can break it into much smaller and more understandable parts and therefore make it easier to maintain and improve upon. Uh, these two reasons are parallel with common problem-solving strategies. So if you think about it, if you learn to do a complex task, the first few times you do it, it's hard, but then you kind of internalize how to do it, and you can just do it. And um, that's similar to writing a sub-procedure that we call over and over again. Another thing is that we can break a large, complex problem into smaller, more manageable parts. And that's something we do with all kinds of problems, not just programs, to make them easier to deal with. So a real-life example would be something like making a left turn in your car. When you first learn to drive and you're making a left turn, you go through a whole checklist, I've written it out here, um, of things to look out for and things to do as you're getting ready to make your left turn, as you get into position, as you actually make the turn. And it can be an intimidating thing when you're first learning to drive. But um, once you really know how to drive and you're driving along, somebody can just say, oh, turn left at the next corner, and it's no big deal. You just sort of automatically go through the steps without having to spell out the agenda in your mind. So you've internalized the left turn procedure. Okay, so now there's two aspects of a procedure. One is a definition, and that's where we actually write out the instructions of what the procedure is going to do. And the other one is the call. And this is a piece of code that actually makes the procedure spring into action and do its thing. Now we've seen um, definitions with the definitions we've written of event procedures. Those didn't need procedure calls because they get called automatically when the event happens. But with the procedures we're going to write now, um, there is no such event, and we have to write an explicit call to make the procedure do its thing. So the definition is like the place in your brain where you've internalized how to make a left turn, and the call is like somebody saying to you, okay, turn left, and you go ahead and do that procedure that you've internalized. So, okay. Um, now we're going to look at some examples of this. And I have a demo here called the Sub and Function Demo in Excel, which I'll post for you, uh, where you can do that. And um, I'll be referring to that as we go along. So here's a sub-procedure definition, and let's look at the parts here. First, there's the header here. It has the name, well, the keyword sub, the name, which we make up. We always start those with a capital letter. We have here two arguments, uh, two parameters. The parameters are optional, so you can just put empty parens if you don't have any. But we have two, and we're declaring their type, and we're also using by val as an indication of what um, kind of parameter it is that's optional. Uh, we are, have a local variable here, and we have a body of code. And what does this do? Well, it um, takes our two arguments, adds them up, and it puts some stuff in a list box called list results. First it adds an item which says what the two parameters are, and then it adds an item which says what the answers are. Now if we look more closely, uh, we can see that the header here has the keyword, the name, and the parameters. And typically we're going to use a verb in that name because a procedure does something. So these are called formal parameters. They occur in the procedure definition. And I haven't been too careful in the previous lectures to distinguish in my language between 
arguments and parameters, but I'll try to be careful from here on out. Um, the parameters or, the, or formal parameters are what appears in the procedure definition and the actual parameters, but we'll call them arguments, are what occurs in the call. The parameters we use are very similar to a local variable. They're going to be type double and uh, in this case. And the important thing about these parameters is that changing them does not change anything elsewhere in your program. So let's just see how this works for a minute here. I'm going to put some arguments in here, call this sub-procedure, and here you see three and four are my two arguments, and I got the answer of seven. Now if I go over to Visual Basic, oh well, I'll have to close that to do so. Um, you can see here that, first of all, I have the um, the button that says call the subroutine, and when I click that, I come up with uh, my two arguments by changing to double the things that were in those two text boxes. And then here I call the print answer routine uh, with those two arguments. And here's my print answer routine. Uh, here are its formal parameters, and they match up by position. So the first argument goes to the first parameter, the second argument goes to the second parameter. It's always like that, by position. And um, here's the code, as I was showing you, I threw in an extra line that using, says using sub print answer, and you saw the, what the result was. Okay. Um, now just a little bit about formal parameters here. Uh, variable names, if you'll recall, are used in two ways. On the right side of an assignment statement, they're used to represent a value, the value that's stored in the location with that name. If they're used on the left side, then they represent the location where we're storing the value. Now, it's possible that instead of passing a value to a routine, we want to actually pass a location. And that can be done, but we're not going to do that. In our class, we're always using value parameters which means you're passing the value only, not the location. So once you're inside the procedure, no changes you make to the parameter can have any effect on the original location, whatever you passed in. Um, so we'll always use these kind of parameters, and um, that way we don't have to worry, but we'll also follow good programming procedure by not changing those parameters within the code. So, okay, the procedure body is, a, is the actual code that we write and any local uh, variables. And the call is what happens elsewhere. So, he, like here, for example, this is the definition of this procedure print answer. This is the call. Okay, so the arguments are fed to the procedure by means of the formal parameters, and they're connected by position. So um, if you want to, so I made up this thing. Uh, you can think of it this way. The, the procedure is like a room with two slots in the walls, like mail slots. And only on the outside can anyone see what those are called, but on the inside, they're called by the names of the parameters. So whatever values get fed in there, it doesn't matter what they were called on the outside. It only matters inside the procedure what they were called on the inside. And those are the names of the formal parameters. So, okay. Um, so we've done that. And we can just play around a little. Suppose instead of B, I use B minus 1. All right, let's see what kind of a difference that makes. I can go back to Excel and... Um, I'll run the macro, which sets up the box here. All right, now let's put a 3 in here and a 4 in here. But now this time what I expect is that I will get 3 for my first argument and 4 minus 1, which is also 3 for my second argument. And in fact, that's what happened. So compare that to this. And you can play around with this and try different things uh, to see how it works. And I could also switch them. I can do whatever I want. It's only by position that um, print answer knows what it's getting. Okay. Now, function procedures are very similar to the sub-procedures we just looked at, but there's one additional element. They return a value. 
and we've seen examples of procedures built into Excel and VBA like um, format. A function can also have parameters and its result has a certain type. So a function calls an expression. So if I look at it here, a procedure call is a statement. I use the word call and I have my procedure call here. It's a statement that stands alone. A function call is returning a value. So a function call is going to be an expression that's used where I could use any other numerical expression or expression of the type that's the type of this function. All right, so um, a function definition has a name. Um, the, well, it starts with a keyword function, first of all. Then there's the name, which again, we should use a verb. I'm calling this compute answer. And I'm keeping these examples really simple so we don't get distracted by what it actually does. I have two formal parameters here, param1 and param2. And finally, I have the type that the function returns, the same as with a user function in Excel. Then I have the code, and I return the answer by assigning a value to the name of the function, and then it finishes with the keywords and function. So if I look down here, um, here's a uh, button function, and actually let's go to Excel here and um, call the function. And you can see that it's adding 3 and 4 and getting 7. And if we look here, it's very similar to what we did before. I add the 3. I, I get the 3 of the, out of the text box, convert it to a double. Same with the 4. That's var A and var B. I pass those as arguments to compute answer. And compute answer gets called and does its thing by adding them. I return that value, and then I just print the results. Okay. Again, play around with this till you understand what's happening. So um, Excel actually doesn't force you to define the type of the function as we do here, but you should definitely do it. So um, again, a function is called from elsewhere in the program, and I show you to, showed you an example of how that works. Now what happens when you call a procedure or a function um, is that the expressions for the argument values are evaluated and the formal parameters are set to those values. Then we go into the body of the code. The dim statements are used to create any local variables. The code for the procedure, whether it's a sub-procedure or function, is executed. And then control returns back to where the call was, either the line after the call if it was a sub-procedure or the line where the call occurs if it was an expression. So here's a flow chart that shows you that. We have some program code, and we hit a procedure call. We set the parameter values, and we go off to wherever in the code that procedure is to do the call, and then we return our value back where we were and continue. 